We are Movie Menu Reviews, your murder mystery Disney property with a meaningful message podcast. On today's menu, we'll be reviewing A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, Knives Out, and Frozen 2. Welcome, ladies and gents. I'm Dan the Man Munoz, host of Movie Menu Reviews, your weekly movie news and reviews. Podcast. Welcome live on yeah. Facebook. And we're back. We took a week off for the holidays. We did. Thanks, Mike. You're uh, welcome. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and we are back for a giant size episode. We, we will be viewing three films, not just one, not yeah. just two, but three. We How many is that? We could have done more, but we kind of got lazy. We got lazy. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> joining me today. Uh, who are also lazy is our special correspondent who we haven't seen all season. <laughs> wow. Diego Espinosa. Yeah. Oh, you brought actually, me in for the lazy episode. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, I love it. Diego, you know, what would be your actually, meaningful message? Meaningful message about yeah. what? I don't know, about actually, life? I would say Rigo is the least laziest person because he has uh, a couple of jobs. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But who knows? Maybe he takes naps at the. I don't know. Love life and eat tacos. <laughs> that's my new message. That's, that's, that's a that's, good message. That's yeah. a pretty good message. Yeah, yeah, really good. Uh, really someone good. who doesn't have a good message, though, is uh, my co host, Sipan Z. Yeah. All his messages are very negative. Well, they're usually, <laughs> um, you know, the movie was okay. That's that's my usual message. Two thirds a good movie. Two thirds a good movie. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, my message is be realistic, guys. Yeah. There's no perfect movie. There is no perfect movie. <laughs> Joining us, who also doesn't believe that because he thinks everything is great, is my <laughs> co-host, Mike Sand. Yeah, I, I believe it's one-third a fantastic movie. <laughs> that that means third? it sucks, dude. No, dude the other two-thirds is, is pretty good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. One-third, fantastic. The two-thirds, pretty good. I think I think Mike's motto is everything is awesome. I think he, he is. Yeah, are you calling me a Lego? Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, well, Emmett, take that a compliment. I'm t- yeah, uh, Emmett, you, you, absolutely. You, you should take that as a compliment. The Chosen one, absolutely. <laughs> that's 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 the farthest you'll get from the, <laughs> the chosen equipment yeah. one. Oh, that, that, that was that was two thirds a good compliment. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome for that. All right, so we're gonna uh, since we have three movies we're going to review. Yes. We're going to go straight into the reviews for the films and uh, not do movie news for this week. No. Uh, hopefully next week we will continue with some movie news. Uh, first up, we are going to review. A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Yeah. Directed by Maria Heller, written by Micah Fitzerman Blue and Noah Harpster, starring Tom Hanks, Matthew Reese, Chris Cooper, and Susan Kelechi Watson. Here's the plot. Based on the true story of a real life friendship between Fred Rogers and journalist Tom Juneau. All right, guys, I have not seen this film, so depending on your spoiler free review, we shall I shall decide this movie is worth a dining and watch in the theaters, take out way to watch it at home or leftovers. Uh have a awful time in the neighborhood. Now, <laughs> go see um, the documentary and set the neighborhood on fire, <laughs> as one should. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Z. Thank you. Um, uh, Rigo, actually, since you're technically part of the crew, you don't really get points either, right? I think no, we, he doesn't. I, I, yeah, I don't think I even uh, use my points, anyways. I just like, oh yeah, I'll just give them to Dan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they don't count. So no points. <laughs> no points this episode. Dan's uh, like, in that case, <laughs> in that case, Rigo, you get all the points. <laughs> all hey. right. Um, uh, so there'll be no points, even though the points really don't matter. Uh, we're like, whose line is it anyway? The points really don't matter. Uh, we just like to make them up as we go along. Uh, so go ahead and, and uh, rate this film, guys. Rigo, you can go first. Okay, I'm going to give it a dine in. Hmm. Dine in? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Mike? Dine in also. And Z? I'm gonna, I'm, since you two are going dine in, I'm going to go say it's a takeout. Uh, a takeout with the caveat that you should buy it. Oh, uh, a DVD buy. Yeah, DVD or Blu-ray, or Blu-ray buy, Blu-ray whatever. Or, yeah, or digital stream. download, whatever. Yeah. yeah, the point is, this is a movie you want to own it's, on it's 4K. A, <laughs> probably not 4K. <laughs> it's not that worthy. <laughs> you, so you're saying to watch it in 4D? Uh, <laughs> no, absolutely not. Now I know one of the miss uh, miss or miss interpretations or uh, misrepresentations of this film is that. Do you think uh, Tom Hanks is the lead role? But That's it's really correct. Matthew Reese. That's correct. The, the yes. story you're following. That's correct. Um, now, many people, when they go in to see this film, they expect it to be a Fred Rogers film and are highly disappointed when it's not. How did you guys feel that 
the story centering around Matthew Reese works, or did you feel like it should have been more towards Fred Rogers? I think it would have been fair had the advertisement focus and showed us that it was going to be uh, not Fred Rogers' story because I had high hopes. I actually walked in hoping to see a lot more of Fred Rogers, uh, you know, probably because I didn't do my research. Uh, however, I did like the story that was being told with Lloyd. It was um, a universal story of anger and, and, and how Fred likes to help people who are that angry. So I thought it was a really a, a good story to tell. But I, I wish that the advertisements f- showed you that it wasn't going to be this Fred Rogers movie. Okay. And Mike, do you agree with Z or do you think it was fine the way it was done? I I enjoyed the way it was and the way you – it was as if you learned about Fred Rogers through the lead character – and um and you become friends with him yeah with you become friends with Mr Rogers and you you see him as a human being but there's still like there there were a few scenes that bothered me which were specifically like the the scenes with uh Mr Rogers in public like there's two okay. scenes in particular and it's not are they in the trailer like there's yeah, one when he's on the subway yeah yeah one there's... one where he's on the subway and there's there it's not a spoiler there's another scene where they're in a in a restaurant yes. i just they just feel very unrealistic they like, do I, I i feel like those scenes could have been taken out there's well, yeah. But they were those were put in there for effect. They like, were. Yeah. Like just to let you know, like, oh like Mr. Rogers was like well loved. Yeah, well yeah. loved. And ev- whenever he spoke, like he he controlled the room. He took over the room. What? And everybody's like stopped and listened. But so. did, did you guys yeah. actually think that was that okay, so the first scene clearly happens because the singing, you know, didn't seem surreal. But the moment in which Wait, he, they're singing in this film? Well, yeah, you saw it in the trailer. You saw it in the trailer. The, the, the sing that no. won't you be my neighbor. Oh, like, my yeah, neighbor. Yeah. yeah, but no. And there is other additional singing. There, there, there are. There's one song. Uh, but no, no. That moment in which they're in the diner and and he asked, "Do you guys think that moment actually happened?" Because I I didn't take it as that. No, I, I just yeah. took it as like symbolism. Like I, that's oh, what I took it as. Like oh, the, he because he basically he was a. Uh, it was basically a moment between him and uh, Mr. And Rogers Lloyd, yeah. and Lloyd. Yeah. But it just like just to magnify the importance the of effects, it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's when everybody just stopped what they were doing, so you it, could like focus. And on it wasn't it. anything to do with the fact that people were quiet during that moment. It was more of that that visual effect of when you have somebody like Mr. Rogers talking to you and he's asking you to be quiet and just to really take that moment the whole world around you shuts off and it was like this really beautiful moment of like mindfulness and and really good therapy uh because it really did show you what mindfulness should be and, and he uh, he tells the character to uh think about all the people who have loved you. which which yeah. is in the documentary at the yeah. end of the film which they use in such a beautiful way in the documentary they spend like a whole minute of just everyone just silent looking at the camera it makes you think someone who's helped you and loved you as well so they do that in this film as well they do they do yeah and, and, and to great yeah. effect they, and Tom Hanks is staring directly at the camera like, yeah and it is watch it. so <laughs> yeah but, it, and it is it feels it like a minute it, it does yeah but but still like I, I felt like um, the the public responding to it in the same way made it feel like like it's Morpheus or something, or like it felt like like very Matrixy, like everyone's like all of a sudden everyone's responding to to Morpheus. But I don't know, or or it was too meta for you. Not no, not what, too, it, it yeah. was it was surreal. This film was was way more surreal than expected. I'll give you that. Was it like or a little? What do you mean yeah. like surreal? Like in like um like the Elton John film that came out? No, like not, no, not no, a, not, a, not as surreal as that. Th- there there are some surreal moments where. Uh, um, so one fun thing is that uh, the transition shots from scene to scene, mm-hmm. you actually see Mr. Rogers set instead of like actual shots of buildings. Yeah. So you see, oh, okay. you actually there's see no models. establishing shots. They're, yeah, they're yeah. all, they're like, all models. Of the neighborhood. Models. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, which is, which is fun to, to see, you know, but, um, Rigo, that's not fun. I'm, I see you or was it, did you enjoy it? Yeah, that was that was. Good. I thought everything was cool. Like if you watch the documentary and you kind of you pay attention to all the mannerisms and all the things he would do with people, like yeah. he does them all in this movie. And I was like, oh, okay, he did this. So it was to me, it was interesting how they implemented like yeah all the stuff that he does uh, towards Lloyd and to try to help him out because uh, right away in the beginning you just see that this guy is like he's extremely angry at the world. Yeah, and, yeah. Now, let's talk about Matthew Reese in that in that role, in that character. Um, 
how did Matthew Reese uh, in, embody that character? Did was there like some type of not that it's a spoiler or not because it's it's a uh, beautiful day in the neighborhood, Miss Rogers, but it's like some redeeming factor to this character? Yeah, or, I, I, or was he like a curmudgeon the whole time? And how did Tom Hanks as Mr. Rogers do as well? Well, I, and I think that that's that's the elevation you want in a character like Frank. Uh, uh, sorry, not Frank Lloyd, but uh, Matthew Reese. Uh, he he's a TV actor, and so you have him matching against. Tom Hanks. And I think that was a perfect pairing because what you had was an actor who was playing angry and Rogers, who's playing essentially a very godly character. But and there's these really great moments where the wife is explained to him, like, don't put him on that pedestal. You know, he he doesn't want to be put on that pedestal. Um, but I think that the way that that uh, Matthew Reese plays the anger is sincere. And there are moments where he's like staring people down and you can tell that that he's brewing like there's like there there's a pot with hot water and he's boiling over in every scene that his father is in um and so it's it's very i thought he did a really good job of just showing that pent up aggression uh it just wanted to boil over and want and, and seeing how that aggression affects his whole family because the 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 central premise of the movie is that he's just had a child uh with an african american wife and so it, already you're spinning the dynamics of what the 19 what 80s i think that's what this movie takes place yes. um and so you're really kind of shifting dynamics the father's a little racist uh so there's a little bit of that going on too and so he's Wait, matthew reese's character this or the no, father no, the father the father who's played by chris cooper who's a great a fantastic su- like he also played a really great supporting cast um and i think that's where for me it kind of starts falling apart just because the acting was a little weak on chris cooper's part um but i think that if you were to watch it dan i think you'd there, there are some really heartfelt moments uh, with their family relationships because it does a really good job of kind of like really turning up the the emotional center of the movie. There's a moment in the movie, like center halfway through the movie, where like they really turn it up, and I was like, oh, we're going there quickly. Like I didn't expect them to like bring out like open up the cl- like all the closet and everything, all the bones falling out, like that kind of deal. So I thought it was really interesting, and I think that that uh, you know Matthew Reese played a great role in it. Tom Hanks supported the hell out of this movie. And then I think if anything, you would want to see this movie as a, a you have two fathers. You have Tom Hanks's Fred Rogers and Chris Cooper's Jerry, and they're both changing. Um, it's like one Matthews. The, yeah, was it like one like one is the angel, one is the devil. Yeah, a little bit like that, yeah. And you're seeing how Matthew. Uh, I think Matthew. Matthew is growing. Yeah. Uh, so it's really interesting. Uh, Mike, do you, would you agree with Z? Yeah, yeah, I think I think there is a and the, I think all of these characters also have uh redeeming qualities as well. So so they still dis, despite those scenes that I didn't enjoy as much which were just only a couple, but uh um they still managed to make uh Fred Rogers feel human. Yeah. And um the father uh to Lloyd there's some redeeming qualities to him as well. Yeah. And so there there really is uh like everyone changes by the end of this the, in, in in a good way and and uh with Mr. Rogers being the heart of that of yeah. that change. He's like the immovable object. He's the only thing that doesn't change this movie. And I think that's the reason why they played this movie the way they did, because if you were to show Rogers throughout this entire story, he doesn't change. You know, he comes in and he's the immovable object, the whole world around him starts to change for the better. And I think that's classification wise, that's how we saw Mr. Rogers growing up. He was a he was a consistent uh, individual in our lives who never changed, but he would always push us to change and be better. Um, and the the additional part that I really enjoyed, maybe I should watch a documentary on this, was just the <laughs> amount of therapy that Mr. Rogers employed in this movie. I thought that was very fascinating. Like, there's that moment in Diner where he like tells him be mindful. Uh, there are other moments in which, even at that, like just active listening, like you see how he t- he's working with a kid who's, I think he's he's dying of cancer, um, and he's really engaging with this kid, and you can see how he's working it and it was just really impressive to watch um a lot of things that he talks about how anger and what why he puts on the show and why he is mr rogers were, were all therapeutic and it just gives you like this this insight into a character into an individual who who knew how to change the world by asking people to you know express the way they feel and think um and and even at that like just the center of of his faith was another part that i i wish when he went to a little bit further in this movie but only touched on it just a tad bit 
Rigo, do you agree with that, with that as well? Yes, I do agree with it. Uh, one of the things I also like, a uh, person like you guys talked about earlier, the the whole advertisement of the movie. When I, me going into the movie, I thought it was going to be just like a another like movie documentary style about Fred Rogers, but yeah, it was like, like a biopic. Yes, yes, but it, it wasn't. It wasn't that. When once I saw the movie uh, progress, I was like, "Oh, this is crazy. This is." Totally not what I expected to see, but I'm liking it a lot. What I also liked is when the movie first started, I I guess it's like the first, well, it's basically the first five minutes. It starts off as like an episode of of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. So basically the whole movie is like a super like ultimate mega size like (laughs) episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. I agree with that. So that was like so cool. And then like halfway through the movie, um, the Lloyd character actually gets implemented like into the episode. That very surreal moment. So I yeah. was like, whoa, that, this, is, this is pretty crazy. This yeah. is pretty intense. So that's something I enjoyed a lot. But I think, I think that's the moment in which I disconnected and why I would say this is more of a takeout because this movie is very televisual. Like they really do not stray away from doing the four by three uh, format. Uh, and that's like the old school television format. You see the movie start off in four by three and it goes into 16 by nine. Um, but it always returns to four by three. And for that reason, I always felt disconnected. Like they were really kind of like going back to television style. And I know that that was the premise and the por- the purpose of that. But I think that the way this movie was shot, I felt like I was watching a lifetime movie and I could have easily watched this at home and felt satisfied. Um, the reason why I think this movie is a takeout and not a dine in is because I feel like you can watch this at home and you can really spend time watching this movie and really kind of like deep diving into the messages. There's so many messages in this movie. Um, and so I think this movie is worth owning. It's not worth running out to watch in theaters. It No explosions happens. There's no vibrating seats that tell you that, you know, sound effects are happening. It's a very quiet movie. And I think you should enjoy it at home. No, Rigo, you bring up a good point um, that you went in not expecting it, thinking it was going to be like a biopic, but it ended up not being that. Do you feel like, though, there was a disservice there where they could have gone with a biopic for Mr. Rogers? Or is it better that it was told in this way, no, in this, in this I, aspect? I don't think so because we got the biopic last year. We, we did. Well, we, it, it was a documentary. Uh, document, yeah. But to me, that felt like that was that was the if they were to make a, a biopic now like a bio movie it would be exactly the same thing because even in this movie they kind of do kind of touch on on some of the some of the rumors uh like say like like uh everybody would say that he was like this super like military soldier and he was a, a sniper or navy seal <laughs> yeah and and they touched on that like they asked like somebody asked him like hey man are you a sniper and he was like no like that's <laughs> that's just a rumor yeah but yeah. It, it was just like they harp on the little things one of the questions that i i really like that they um they posed in this movie was that uh they asked him because he basically the lloyd was like you you like people like me and he was like what do you mean like broken people and and he asked him like how do you deal with the burden because everybody that talks to him basically like vents to him and tells him his problems so mr yeah. mr. He's like their personal therapist yeah. yes yeah, yeah, basically yeah. That, so that was it mr rogers he he basically answered with the things he would tell the kids on the show like yeah if you have a piano just hit like all the he would avoid yeah, yeah he was avoiding the entire time yeah basically so he, and that was something like oh man i i would really want to know like how yeah. does he deal with it but yeah. it wasn't he never really gave a concrete answer and it's very interesting too because yeah, i mean it's in the trailer but that moment in which he's like expressing like you know i just want to hit those keys you do get to see a moment in which he like really does pound the keys <laughs> and and without saying much he you can tell just by the way tom hanks and again tom hanks is an amazing actor he, he the way he does that you can tell that he's angry but he there's no way of him saying that to anyone and that made me want to know more okay i'm gonna ask two more questions yeah. and then we'll be done <clears throat> the first question is to rigo and mike so z described why it was a takeout can you guys describe why it's a dining for you I think it's a very um a very heartfelt film and I think uh I think it cuts real deep in terms of like father son relationships and broken families and how to mend them and uh, I I felt like it was a very powerful message and and it can be a tearjerker so 
Yeah. Where you go? For me, it's a dine in because right now, if you look at the slate of movies that's out right now, there's nothing else like like that out there right now. So if you're looking for a change of pace, if you're looking for something that's gonna, you know, make you think a little, that's gonna um basically like just Kind of make you feel good. I left the movie feeling like really good. Yeah, and yeah. it was very emotional. It took me on an emo- emotional roller coaster, which, you know, like you go Sometimes watch, you need. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah of yeah. course, everybody always needs that. So it, in a way, you know, that movie did its job. It was very therapeutic. It was very uplifting. And you know what? I can't deny what they both said. Um, my only my only question is, what do you like? Do you need to see this movie in a theater to still have that moment? Uh no, and, yeah. and you're and you're right about that. I will yeah. say that. Like if you, if I know I'm gonna buy this uh, when it comes out. Yeah. Um, even on 4K, I know we just made a <laughs> joke about it being in 4K or whatever. But um, to be honest, like the one thing I like about the theaters myself is that that's where I can actually focus and have attention towards watching the movie as opposed to watching it at home where there's so many distractions. My phone, everything is like. So is this a movie worth putting your phone away? I think Mr. Rogers watch. would have something to tell you about how you live in uh, in your home, <laughs> of like making sure you remove th- those distractions. <laughs> I think I think this film will keep you engaged from beginning to end. I agree. Yeah, it's not a boring movie, and I agree with Z that it's uh, that it's very subtle, but but not boring, and it yeah. and it's way and and there's um, surreal moments that kind of like. That kept me Definitely like, wake you up? Yeah, that kept me like, what the heck is ha- yeah. happening? There's All one right. moment, there's one editing moment, and this is my final note, there's one editing moment that just made no sense, and without going to spoilers, uh, I will probably talk to you guys about it, but that's the one scene where I was like, oh, they, the director, um, you know, she Heller just did not include this one little scene that needed a transition, and because of that, it really disoriented me in the whole movie. Okay, my final question. Um, so... Um do you guys feel like Tom Hanks or Matthew Reese will be nominated for an Oscar for this film? Uh, Won't You Be My Neighbor didn't get any love yeah. for the Oscars last year. It was not nominated for Best Documentary, which was really surprising. Do you feel like this will be its time for Mr. Rogers to shine at the Academy Awards? I, I, I'm going to say yes. Okay. It, it, the movie will be nominated. Just thinking about what's out now, and I, I don't know about you guys, but nothing has really, like, Super grab my attention where I'm like, oh, okay. nothing's touched there's, you there's like been, this film. There's been some films out so, there. Okay, so you, you can name eight <laughs> films right now that you would say would be nominated for. An I Oscar. would probably give you about four or five, okay, so, but not eight. Okay, but they, so, the Oscars never go with eight. Yeah, they do. They they Usually very go rarely go well, they go like low. nine. They'll go eight. The most I've seen them is eight or nine. But okay. yeah. but uh, I do think this movie will be, will be nominated. I do think Tom Hanks will probably get a best supporting nob yep. nomination, and um. That's that's about it, and maybe the uh, Lloyd character he'll it'll be shocking, but I I would like to see him at least get a nom for like best mm-hmm. actor. Mm-hmm. Okay, Z? No, I don't I don't think it will. I actually think no, this, nothing. I think this movie's not getting nothing. I think this movie plays so quietly that I feel like it's going to be ignored, uh, and for that reason, it's not going to get a lot of views. It's not going to get a lot of recommendations. It's not going to get the nomination, um, which is too bad. I do what? feel like Tom Hanks does a great job. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that this movie doesn't deserve an award. What I'm saying is this movie I think is so underplayed. That I feel like people, will, especially the Academy, will they not might get a go on Globe nomination. <laughs> yes, that's what I mean. It's like it's gonna get, it's gonna be so underplayed that that, he, that he, they're not gonna get nominated because he's he does such a good subtle job, and the Oscars generally rewards more bombastic uh, character actors. Um, so I, I would be surprised to see even Matthew Reese being nominated. Mike, yeah, I think Tom Hanks will get supporting, or he'll he'll get nominated for supporting. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, I think I heard enough. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with takeout. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So wait and watch it at home. Um, uh, I'll have to focus, though, Mister Rogers. You so. will. You will. Be, <laughs> I, I agree. What Mike said. You will. You will be tuned you, in you, as soon as the movie starts. You'll you will put that phone away. You might have have a tissue, and you will need you, a you tissue might, box. You might yeah. cry. Yeah. Whether did, it's did, the, did you guys cry? I I did. Yes. I'll be honest. I did. Yes. I had a, I had a, I had a tear go. Yeah. Just, just the one yeah. tear. <laughs> just yeah. the one. It was it was the same type of tear like when somebody litters. Yeah. <laughs> the Indian. That's that's how it happened. I was like, no. Oh. <laughs> was it like the Indian in Wayne's World too? It was. <laughs> yeah, he had yeah, that yeah, one yeah, tear. Yeah, yeah. It was. Yeah. Did you cry, Rigo? I did actually. I I I, I didn't cry. <laughs> I didn't cry. Cry, but at the end when. 
when he I don't I, no I don't want to go into spoilers, yeah, but no at spoilers. the end he does something like he goes to visit. He Lloyd. dies. I'm no, no, oh. <laughs> I'm just no, kidding. man. No, I'm, <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I haven't <laughs> seen it. I'm kidding. No. How did you know? No, I'm just <laughs> well, he goes to visit Lloyd at a, at um at, right. a, at a place, and and he he says something to someone, and then Lloyd asks him, "What did you say?" And then that's when I was like, oh, man, that's pretty deep. Yeah. So yeah, I yeah. was like, whoa. Yeah. That and, that one, that was a really deep. So deep. that was yeah. like, oh, man. And it came down. I was like, I, I'm sorry. I can't help it. After this, yeah. I, I couldn't help it. Agreed. Z? Uh, I did not cry. Uh, but I... I that, that's that's why it's a take out for you. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. That, I'm, I'm just kidding. Yeah, that it's just simply that I I didn't cry because I was just so in tune and and absolutely what Rigo said. That moment was such a powerful moment that I was part of me was like wanting to take my notebook out and just write that down because it was just such a very well scripted line. Um, but yeah, no, I didn't cry. I just thought it was a very beautiful movie. For me, it was a se- it was a separate scene. I won't. I, I don't know if I can no. say. Yeah, no, I, no, don't don't give it away. But yeah, I won't. Give it away. I I won't give it away. So okay, uh, we have, we do have a comment. Right. Uh, Frank Ruby, who I think is a friend of yours, yes. Diego, says, "Hey, hey, hey, hi." <laughs> All right, Frank so, is actually he actually I think he watches you guys like every week. Oh, cool! Hey, thank hey, you, hey, Frank, hey. for supporting us. Thank Appreciate you so it. much. Thank you. All right, so we we'll move on to the next movie review. Movie menu. And I did see that film, so I'm going to toss the host and duty over to Z and Rigo. Hey! As me and Mike will be reviewing. All right. What movie are we reviewing again? Knives <laughs> Out. That's right. Uh, Knives Out, PG-13, directed and written by Ryan Johnson, starring... Is it really da- PG-13? It is, in fact, PG-13, okay. starring wow. Daniel wow. Craig, Chris Evans, Anna de Armas, Jamie Lee Curtis, Michael Shannon, Don Johnson, Tony Collette, Lakeith Stanfield, and Catherine L- Langford. Did I miss anyone? Uh, yeah, there's still a lot of people. But well, fine. I'm sure there are. This is, this is a clue level of uh, actors. Uh, here's the plot. A detective investigates the death of a patriarch of an eccentric, combative family. Uh, as we said before, there will be no points, but the rating system goes as as this. Uh, if you're... I will decide if movies worth a dine in. Watch it in theaters. What? Uh, yeah, watch it in theaters to take out. Watch it at home or leftovers. Um, fall on a bed of knives and accidentally stab yourself. Or go watch Clue. Or go watch Clue. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we always good, we always lean on death. We keep forgetting that there are better movies out there to watch. Um, okay. So uh, me and Rigo didn't watch it. So rate this film, Mike. I'm gonna go with a dine in. All right. I did it. <laughs> what what did you do? Did you I, kill I, him? I I, I did. Yeah, he's, a, he's the murderer. He killed this review. Apparently, I did. <sighs> Mike. All right, Dan. It's it's a dine in as well. Okay. Um, you know Brian Johnson for whatever you have to say about Star Wars: the Last Jedi. Yep. The films before that he's done, Looper, Brick, The Brothers Bloom, they've all been really enjoyable, and they've always had like some type of twist or some type of genre infused in them. Not like, the Last Jedi. That's what I said. Yeah. Other than the last other Jedi. than the last Jedi, that was just garbage. Um, shut up. Uh, <laughs> so uh, this is a nice uh, foray for Who Done It, uh, murder mystery. Like they did, like those seven movies are my are my. They are movies. your absolute go tos. Yeah, and they they did the Orient Express like a couple years ago. Yep, and uh, like a Christie novel. It's into a film, which is also was a whodunit. Mm-hmm. Um, it had a huge cast as well. And I feel like Ryan Johnson saw that film and was like, okay, I could do a bit much better. Oh, okay. And he did. So it was a competitive film. It's it's really good. Okay. It's really fun to watch. And it's actually a lot more funnier than you think it is. It's well, more of a comedy than, than anything, really. Well, I mean, I know this because it's on every freaking poster out there. Like, this movie's been... We were talking about advertisements for, uh, you know, for A Beautiful Day, and it's like, this movie has gotten the, but, the but opposite of posters. No, you know? no, because... It's a ton of posters. That, too. But um, the funny thing is, so you see the... The um, advertisements of the family, like Jamie Lee Curtis, John sure, Johnson, sure, Michael sure. Shannon. Um, this story is very compacted to uh, a character yeah. under the armas. There's you a follow, lead. You, yeah. you, you follow the lead. You, yeah. you as an audience are her. Okay, and yeah. it's. It, I think they did a good job with that. They did an amazing job with that, and and the trailers it misleads you into thinking this is like an ensemble. Yeah, it's a huge ensemble, and it's not. They're okay. all. This ensemble is all supporting. Yeah, yeah, I would say it's another Armas movie, and she gotcha. carry and she carries it very well, very well. All right, so tell me about her uh, character and how does she do as the role? 
Martha Cabrera. Um, yeah, so she plays Martha. She plays the living nurse to the to um the patriarch of the family. Yes, Christopher Plummer uh, played yeah, by Christopher Harlan Plummer. Trombley. Um, um, he's he he owns this like huge property of mystery novels that he, he has writes. All the money in the world, basically. Okay, okay. And so it's like the type of thing um, where like it's a party. All this stuff happens, and then like the next day, um, someone's murdered. And they wait. Is he is he murdered or or I heard it was a suicide. That was the initial um, discussion point for this. Movie. Th- it is. They believe it's a suicide, but uh, that's in the trailer, right? They, yeah, they believe it's a suicide. Um, but, but then, uh, but then um, Daniel Craig's character, who's also great in this film, <laughs> yeah, yes. he's he's like um, Longhorn. Um, <laughs> it's it, Longhorn, uh, like, like uh, uh, no, his 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 accent. Yeah, it's, it's like could you fight? Or is it Longhorn or Foghorn? Foghorn. Foghorn. It's it's okay. very, it's super difficult to pull off to have an actor like speak like that and to take him seriously. <laughs> but yeah, but uh, but at some point, like I. I by the end of it, I, I believe it. I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, he's." He, that's I say, <laughs> I say, like, yeah. like that kind of a uh, yeah, exactly, yeah, 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 yeah. Exa- exactly. He sounds like the KFC that. dude, yeah, yeah, who, basically, which which is a, a running on a run on joke in the film. <laughs> they, they, okay, you know. yeah. Uh, uh, Chris Evans tells them, "Where is this the, the um, Colonel isn't CSI it? It KFC?" Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, so Daniel Craig, uh, Benoit Blanc, which which is such a Perot name right it's a it it's is. a level of, in which, of, which i feel like it's like a like a, a wink and a nod to um the christie's character yeah for sure without um, a doubt but in the, in a funny way because instead of him being british they go for the opposite right is he autistic as well no no okay, no, no, no. okay. <laughs> that was a huge play for for the new that new movie where it's like like he stepped on shit and he's like no i need to get the balance of the shit it's what not about stepping fuck? have you not seen that movie no it's well, it's a really ridiculous movie um so it's an ensemble cast it has a whole bunch of actors in it are they all playing high caliber or are they like some are like phoning it in because you that's a huge cast. They're very well done, but but it's all supporting though. Yeah, yeah. Mar- Marta's your lead. Yeah, so you follow Marta, and yeah. then you you interact with with the family through like a series of interviews. Um, and then there's like and then there's flashbacks to like the night of the party and whatnot. But it's really like Marta's story. Okay, uh, but like Jamie Lee Curtis and Don Johnson, they're all really great in the film as well. Yes. But um, you don't you don't get to know know them as much as other than the fact that obviously there's money involved so you so find, somebody you somebody find, you, yeah. you find out backstories and whatnot about wh- who needs money or financial and all this stuff which is interesting uh but <laughs> it's it's really marta's story and i think her story is even more compelling than, than the whole family combined yeah. which is which is great because like we're following her the most in this film right oh, okay. and the funny thing is um uh, her mom is an undocumented um and so all this stuff happens, and like you find out that uh, uh, Marta's character uh, is in danger of getting her mom um, deported. Deported. Okay. And the there's a run on joke, which I don't know. Yeah. Every family, every, every member is like, "Oh, um, how are you doing from Brazil?" Or or yeah, thinking that she's from a different part of Latin America. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. So she's it's like, a run oh, on. It's a run on racist she's joke. Like, oh yeah, yeah. basically, okay. like these people have no idea where she's from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so one of the things he keeps mentioning is how funny this movie is. I heard this movie is a it's a bit of a comedy. Uh, does this movie because it's a whodunit as well? Does this movie feel more of a comedy than a whodunit? And do you feel like that was the right way of making this movie? It's a nice blend, and, I would say. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, like I feel you like disagree, Mike. I feel like it it, de- it temporarily derails from the Who Done It. Okay, but but then like it, it reels well, us back in. To be fair, in. yeah. Um, so they tell us early on who who did it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so without very, spoilers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Without spoilers, they tell us early on who did it. And then we just start. We start to re- we see the events happen. Okay, but th- uh, uh, what you're saying is something that's more of a trope in in, in uh, Who Done It movies. Do they tell you explicitly this is the person who killed the person, or do they they show you something that is alluding to the the final act? No, they they show the act. They oh. show everything that happened. What was it? Oh, okay. Well, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, without spoiler, without yeah. spoiler. I'm not, I'm not gonna say what happened. It's like a confession thought. 
like the the person is like being interrogated and then before they answer we see the scene play out uh-huh. and then they go back to them being interviewed okay and then they we see them say something different i'm just gonna i'm just gonna red flag it you just you just spoiled the movie you did. You really? totally just spoiled the movie. Yeah, because now you're telling me that I, if I watch this movie and I see that scene, that's uh, me kind of knowing that. No, no, there's, there's no, no. It's not it's, a spoiler. This is that's... early on in the film. It's it's early in the film. It's it's yeah. not even a spoiler. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. you'll because where you think this movie's going, it goes in a different directions by the end, Rigo, which, is what do you really, think? which is really nice. Uh, that, and that was going to be one of my questions. Did you guys figure out who killed? Who or who done it before the movie ended? But I guess you guys already knew. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, you, you told us right up front. Yeah, it kind no. of defeats the purpose of a who done it <laughs> no, movie. It's it's very it's it's, it's smartly done because yeah, yeah. the 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 killer is revealed in the first act. Okay, we apologize, guys. We just bought the movie for you guys. Uh, <laughs> no, no, because because then it goes into a deeper dive as you're as you finding out. Um, the, what what happens? It's it's a deeper dive. Deeper There's dive, more to the story than than the first act. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, but it, deeper it, dive? How? Like, do you get to it's, like it's, it's, the it's, side it's, stories, or or is it just the main story? You you find out other stuff, or well, because the the story is telling you to go this way, um, in the first act, and then by the second and third act, you're really like going in a different direction. Okay, I'm I'm hoping to navigate this out. Do they show multiple uh, possibilities of the murder, or they? No. No. It, oh, okay. Okay. They they literally tell you like, hey, this is what it is, and then by the third act they're like, psych or kind of whatever. Okay. okay, I, okay. Yeah. I, I I can do some comparisons, but I'm afraid that if I do it, don't it'll, spoil anymore. It'll, yeah, it'll yeah, spoil. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but I agree with Dan that this it, it's it's very funny. It's it's still a fun ride, and it's it's not your standard typical whodunit. It's not. And what, it, what makes this movie different? Um, the the way <laughs> they tell you everything. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. You, based on the trailer, you're like, there's this assumption. It's like, uh, there's this assumption that it's going to be an interrogation between every single family member, and you're going to try to figure out who had done it in the end. And then, and then there's that typical like, uh, uh th- there's that typical assumption where it's like the whole family did it or something like that. But right. it, it's it's not that at all. And it it it. I I think the the writing the script writing it's very self aware of that and it's it's very aware of what the audience thinks uh, where the audience may think it will be going and they and it tries to outsmart you yeah mm-hmm. and it's, in, in a really cool way I think and yeah and you, you're just kind of along for the ride for with Marta's character so okay. Mar- that that's how they pronounce her name Marta so Marta yeah. that's why I keep saying it Marta not Mar- Martha not Martha gotcha Rigo any questions. Uh, no, they, I pretty much have heard like everything I needed to know. It's <laughs> kind of interesting though. Like I thought, it, since it was a big ensemble cast, that uh, everybody was gonna have like major roles. But yeah, that's what I thought too. But they they don't. But it works. Yeah. Um, Heather says hi, guys, and then hi, she Heather. says uh, ruin. No, it's not ruin. I promise. <laughs> it okay, ruined. okay. It's, I it's, kinda, literally, it's literally the first thirty okay, minutes of the film. Uh, part of me is kind of like oh. Okay, thanks for that, guys. <laughs> it's really the first thirty minutes I, of the film. Wait, it's, but it's it, not even. Is it's it going to be? Act. Is it going to be like Clue, where they have like it's, multiple endings? And it's not. Later it's on? not like Clue. It's not, it's not, it's so, not like so, is it anything like Clue at all? No, it's not. Okay, because no. I feel like the advertisement were kind of focusing a little bit on that as well. Um, all right. Well, I kind of feel like uh, not much of a choice here to make uh, for rating. What do you? What do you guys have? Any final words? Uh, it's a fun ride. Um, it's funny because it it tells you what it what. It should be, and then toy like Mister X you towards the end, okay. which I like. Mike, I, I agree with Stan. It's a very, uh, yeah. Go watch it. Enjoy the ride. Okay. Uh, one final question: Any relation to Radiohead? This is just me oh, asking uh, because no. "Knives Out" is a song from Radiohead. Do you hear that at all, or is it just no. kind of like no? No. Okay, I just no. wondered. No relation. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the amnesiac song. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So uh, the my final verdict and Rigo, do you agree with this? Uh, it's going to be done in. Yeah, I guess. Uh, now I'm kind of curious to watch it just to see where what direction it takes me in because but... you know we we kind of know where to and, go. Uh, yeah. One one last thing: the un- okay. the ensemble cast does a very good job at being annoying. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm actually looking forward to because I I saw the and, the, and racist and racist. There's literally, there's literally the little boy 
is uh, a white supremacist. Oh, geez. Yeah, he's the alt right kid. Oh, right yeah. kid. Yeah. Well, all right then. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, making fun of this movie then. I think this review has confused me a lot more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like then going into the, watch the actual film. I'm like, yeah. now I'm like, mm, I have to watch it now. <laughs> you do. Ryan uh, Johnson does such an interesting uh, job with um, really taking the tropes of whodunit and really turning it upside down on its head. All right. Um, well, I'm going to toss the hosting dudes back to you. Uh, as this movie is a dine-in. Yay! Dine-in, right. go watch it in theaters. Go have fun and be shocked at the end. <laughs> or confused. Or confused, or confused. Like Rigo and I currently are. <laughs> it was all a dream. Well, it feels... <laughs> that would have been terrible. <laughs> that would have been terrible. Okay. <laughs> all right, we're going to move on to the next movie review. Movie menu. And the final movie we're reviewing is Frozen 2, directed by Chris Buck and Jennifer Lee, written by Jennifer Lee, starring Kristen Bell, Idina Menzel, Josh Gad, and jo- Jonathan Groff. Here's the plot. Anna, Elsa, Kristoff, Olaf, and Sven leave mm. Arendelle to travel to an ancient autumn-bound forest of the Enchanted Land. They set out to find the origin of Elsa's powers in order to save their kingdom. All right, guys. Um... Who did not see this film? I did not see this film. Saw All right, so film. Rigo, you would decide this movie's worth a dining and watch it in theaters, <laughs> take out weight and watch it at home, or leftovers. Uh, just watch the first one and ignore this one completely. That's mm-hmm. not really a bad thing. Uh, <laughs> I've, I, so I we're going to wa- yeah, okay. It's, it's going to be a hard sell. Go ahead, yeah. Rigo. I try to watch the first 20 minutes of this so I can actually go see the second one, and I stopped. I was okay. like, That's what I said. Okay, okay so... Uh, watch something go watch, on Disney Plus instead. Go to Disney Plus. Uh, that's yeah. where go I watch, man, watch The Mandalorian. Disney. There you go. That's not even fair. That's <laughs> that's a really good show. <laughs> that's a really good show. Let's just <laughs> review that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we did last week <laughs> or two weeks ago. Oh, yeah, we did. Uh, so on that note, let's go ahead and rate this film. Um, I'll go first. Go I'll say it. it's a takeout. Yep. Go ahead and watch it at home. Um, Z. I'm going to go with what you just said. Takeout it was not Frozen 1. And I know if Rigo is already opposing Frozen 1, if you thought the Frozen 1 was a takeout, uh, this movie would be a leftovers for you. No, no. It's not that I'm opposing it. It's just, See, it's just no, I very... I, I don't remember. I watched it and I don't remember anything about it. I, I get it. Because I literally watched Frozen for the first time Saturday. For the first time. I went time. to go watch Frozen 2 the next day. So it took... Frozen came out in 2014? It, it did, yeah. And... um took me five years to watch frozen okay. and i finally watched it and watched frozen 2 and it's still i'd rather watch both at home uh mike i'll go with the takeout as well yeah i i had a battle between uh takeout and dine-in actually what was the dine-in for you uh i i saw it in no i saw it in 3d I yeah, see, yeah you know, i was gonna say that did, this I movie saw, is visually stunning it is, it is and visually I, amazing and i did see it in 3d as well and i did enjoy it in 3d um but i feel like the film itself service itself better probably watching it at home yeah i watched the movie in the, um the that 4k screen the the, the what the rumble pack seats oh you uh, saw the 4d stuff? yeah it wasn't oh, 4d oh, no no it was the dolby screen yeah oh, yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, i took gotcha, my mom to go watch it and she was really satisfied with the experience because it was just this visually stunning thing cool. uh everything looked like like as if it was cl- not claymation but like dolls uh it, it looks so good i think the the upgrade of technology from the first movie to this movie is worth the experience of watching the theater. But aside from that, really, the story is not that good. And this is something we usually I mean, argue. The story is decent. We but usually argue rather, here rather a the, lot. Rather the, I mean, what was so much the story on the first one? Well, so, the, no, but the first one had a really good theme. It was a very, it was an inversion of what we expect the Disney princess to be, right? We expect, and that's a huge joke in the first one, which is if you, you know, you meet somebody, you must fall in love because you're a princess and that's the way things go. And then it subverts that entirely and focuses less on, on uh, true love's kiss and focuses more on what true love's kiss actually might be, which is like the kiss of a sister because you no, are it's in a love true with love, a true love act. It was a true love act. Whatever. The point being, it was this entire inversion of, of what we expected. And it was this really interesting, good central theme of girls and, and, and women empowerment. Um, this movie this one still carries that message it does but it also just deep dives on mythology this is more of a mythology movie this will be more of like a george r R. martin type of movie where it really does more world building which is not a bad thing it's not but it wasn't interesting with this movie i feel like there there's characters in these movies olaf in particular who are just go from being charming and cute to being 
absolutely annoying. And there's like sequences in which I wish I had my fast forward button because I just wanted to skip it. Like there's an entire song by John Jonathan Groff that I just thought was a waste of time. Um, there are also no real good music in this film that actually stands out as like, you know, Let It Go. Let It Go was an amazing song. This movie didn't really have the same the standout. The same standout. I think they, they, and I feel like they had more songs in this movie than in the original, and that oversaturated. That's right. I did feel like there was more musical numbers going from in right, and out. Right. It was just really strange, and because of that, it just felt like it was missing the mark. For it, me, the what what didn't work for me is I wanted to know more about the lore. So. When watching the trailer again, we talk about the representation in the trailer. Mm-hmm. I I thought that they that Elsa was gonna meet someone similar to her, and from the trailers, right? And you find out it's it's these four um, spiritual, H, H is spiritual el- elements. El- elements. She is the fifth element, mind you. Did you not catch that comparison? Yeah, I did. Yeah, this movie is literally the fifth element. It just was an animated form. It's also um, like. Spider Man Far From Home. You yeah. Know, the elementals are attacking the town. Uh huh. This is this element these elementals are attacking Arendelle. Except they're cute. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, I wanted to know more about I wanted to know more about them. Wait, but on the trailer is it like the impression I got from this movie was that, that it was gonna be like super action packed. Like is yeah, there no. more like action in this movie than There's there was? Some, in but the not first really, one? no. No, 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 no. It was misleading. It was yeah, super it was misleading. misleading. The commercials in this the this whole week. I mean you do you do see like Anna, Anna and Elsa kick some butt, but not like Immense, yeah, because that, that's what I got back. from it. I thought it was like, oh man, the first one, yeah, because of that one thing I do remember is the, what Z uh talked about, which is uh, love's truth to uh, first uh, true kiss, and yeah. you got to marry the dude. And this was the whole movie where the princess said, No, I don't want to marry you, I don't right, even know right. you. So I thought in this one, when I saw the trailer, I was like, oh man, look, they're gonna go like full blown, like they're gonna be some like badasses in this one. It is so, sure because of the whole ocean when she's like running to right. the ocean and stuff yes. like that, but. Yeah, which yeah. looked cool, but then, yeah, but then, pretty cool. It was this, cool, but this movie just again, it just, it just felt like they really didn't have a complete story, and they were pampering it with a whole lot of filler. Um, there's an entire three minute sequence where Olaf explains to you Frozen One, like was, that, it, was right. it three minutes? Yeah, yeah, it was three minutes, yeah. and it was just a complete waste. Like it's like, okay, did you? Did you need this movie to be one hour and 43 minutes long? You could have lost those extra three minutes and left it without that. There are other moments in the movie where they really explain, they also explain certain plot lines from Frozen One or even at that, like w- things that happen in the shorts that nobody watched or nobody really cared to There was one to. short that everyone we watched. We all had to watch it and we all hated it. Was it was for Coco. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, there's all, again, there's, there's, this movie just feels like, and I, and I wish Heather was on here. Sorry, Rigo. Uh, no, because no, it's I would, okay. I I would She's want Disney to expert. hear her opinion on this because it just felt like it was okay. During production, they had said that we're not going to make a Frozen two until we have the right story, and part of me feels like they sold out. Well, I feel like there was a story there, but it just wasn't as developed as it should have been. Yeah, I wanted to know more about the elementals, and then there's like this whole story within the the mist, and then the whole backstory, and then the whole it's like. I don't know. I I wanted to know more. Yeah, yeah, and and even at that, like there, the, I feel it, like we it, got a lot of pieces. Yeah, but it wasn't like fully fleshed out. Well, and the movie does focus on family, and that's that's the central plot. But it does it in a way that really removes you from the experience. And I'm glad they didn't do the thing that I thought they were going to do, which is the you know the I, I don't want to spoil it, but but um but then they they did the same thing in the first film that they did in this film which kind of bothers me yeah the like the villain of the movie is not revealed until like the end yeah. almost yeah yeah but they give you like a false villain hey, right. and like in the first movie it was like the little short um the yeah the the guy with the toupee right. you think he's gonna be the villain of the weasel movie, yeah which weasel yeah. yeah thank you and it ends up being hans and this one, they do kind of the similar. But there's thing. no real villain though in this movie. That's the thing, and that's the thing. The I other, mean, there is, but not not. There's mm-hmm. no physical villain. That's the thing. See, my problem with this series is that I wish and and I hope that maybe, and I doubt they'll do it, is that Elsa should be the villain. Initially, for the original Frozen story, Elsa was going to well, be the, the villain. The Snow Queen. Yeah, the Snow Queen. That's where they were going. But then, you know, uh, Adina Menzel sang uh, Let It Go, and they were like, oh, no, we need to change the story completely. Um, but yeah, these movies 
they need a villain. They need something to push the plot along that actually makes us want to or worry a little bit for these characters. And they haven't been able to deliver that. Toy Story did a really good job of delivering villains for each of the movies in a way that was non-threatening. This movie doesn't do any of that. And because of that, it loses us. And more importantly, all these songs that they littered throughout it, it felt more Bollywood than it felt like it was an actual Disney movie. And that's that's straying a lot from the formula. I don't know. I, I kind of feel like this movie really did lose itself uh, in its production. And I think that they were trying to make a story as they were filming it, and you got you got scraps. You didn't get a good story well, at all. That's, that's hard to say because... Uh, if- I mean, the film takes about three three years. So I doubt that they were just writing Agreed. the script Agreed. as it goes. Mike, what did you think about the movie? I think, uh, like, I this was a very heavy musical. Yeah, and and I think that it just it just made me feel like I wasn't the audience for it. I that's, I yeah. have I have well, I, I enjoy musicals, but um, there's for me like nothing really stuck. Yeah, and I yeah. I felt like they like they didn't really sit in place with the story to me. Yeah. Agreed. And, and it just, and I, I think the, the, the main thing that stood out to me that I enjoyed was just the, the visuals there. There are some amazing sequences mm-hmm. like, like you see in the trailer, that whole water sequence. And mm-hmm. it's, it's not, I don't know if it would be spoiler to talk more about that, but, but, uh, but I, I liked, I do like the introduction of like the elementals and stuff like that. And, and I agree with you, Dan, I think if they would have developed the elementals more and made that like, uh, made that, a, a deeper part of the story, I think it would have been more entertaining. Agreed. Or like the elementals like themselves were not yeah. just spirits, but like people like Elsa or yeah, yeah, and yeah. giving us a villain to work off of like anything like that would have been fantastic. I think mm-hmm. Mike, Mike stumbled on, you stumbled on the, the, the key thing who this movie is for the, the audience. This movie is now in its second week and it's got number one. Uh, it's made up its money. So clearly this movie has found its audience. It's in children as we expected. Um, but I don't know whether or not this movie has that long, maybe, maybe we need to watch it again. Maybe that's the thing. Right, maybe I need to watch it a second time to kind of like, to figure out what the story actually was here. And I'm <laughs> no, more, no, I'm saying like me, I'm, yeah, me too. I'm more than willing to sacrifice the time to go watch it again. Uh, and maybe even during the second time, like in the same way that Inside Out, I didn't like Inside Out the first time I watched. The second time I loved it um, because I feel like this movie is clearly connecting with audiences, the younger audiences. So there must be something there that I didn't catch the first time, and I was in a right state of mind to watching it the first time. So I'm I'm wondering maybe maybe it was an expectation. Uh-huh. Maybe we walked in with the high expectations and we we lost our way through the movie. Although I don't know about that though, because I work with children every every morning. So sure. um, typically, when kids when kids movies comes out, like uh, the kids will actually talk to me about the movie when they watch it okay. the next day. And I have had no one talk to me about this movie at all. And I know the girls have seen it because they're like, "Oh yeah, we saw it." Hmm, they're whatever. not just trying to avoid you. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just. I just have a question though. Like, yeah. do you guys think? Yeah, you guys said this movie took three years to to make and everything. Yeah. Do you think Disney's gonna start just coming out with filler movies so they could put into the streaming service? I, uh, and do you guys think uh, the quality of the movies will be affected by he, Disney Plus? Here's what I wish this movie was. I wish this movie was a TV show. I wish this movie was an actual mm. fleshed out series that talked about the elementals and really dove deep into that universe. Of no, because that makes me think of Aladdin. The Aladdin, the okay, anime but, series, okay. or or like but those were Timon fun. and Pumbaa. They were fine for what they were, but they're not as epic as the films. Sure, themselves. sure, See, absolutely. I think I if they would have went deeper into like the elementals and like each element had its own song, I think that would have been cool. Yeah, or like the, but what I did not. The thing that bugs me the most is that these elementals are like attacking Arendelle, but they are in they are in the mist. So. I don't know. It was yeah. it was like but like they didn't follow a lot of the rules or whatever that I would have liked them to have followed. Yeah. For their own characters, for their own story, for their own lore. Um and that just bothered me and I was annoyed. Unlike the cold. Because the cold never bothered me anyways. Right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Let it go, Z. Let it go. <laughs> Sorry, I'm tired. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I don't think that Disney's just gonna start doing filler movies because they like money in the box office. They do like money, but they don't I, I don't think they're gonna do box office stuff. I agree with Rigo. I think they're moving away from theaters. Yeah, those are good questions, Rigo. Yes, agreed. Um, yeah, I, I think that's that's essentially it. 
Okay, well, yeah. I guess after listening to the argument, uh, <laughs> not much of an argument. <laughs> for, we all kind of for, agreed on like, yeah, it's it's fine. Uh, I guess it it is a uh, takeout. You can do leftovers if your heart desires, or, <laughs> or dine in if you really want to see it in theater. No, yeah. you know what? I'm gonna give it a I'm gonna give it a takeout okay. only because <laughs> I feel like this movie. Maybe I will enjoy at home a lot more. Just uh, just to give a brief example, I just watched Maleficent for the first time okay. like on Saturday, and I really enjoyed it at home, and I was like, oh, I'm going to go watch the second one in the theater, which I did the same day. Okay. And I was like, okay, this was really good. Oh, so, Z hated the wow! movie. I know. I, I know. I, I, I enjoyed know. it. I, 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 I don't know why. I just like both movies. I yeah. think Heather's wow. on your side, too. Wow. I'm yeah. shocked. I'm so shocked. I enjoyed it as well, You cannot give me shit for Paper Towns ever again. <laughs> Dude. Dude. Because you like no. Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. You know what? They didn't sing a Pokemon song in that movie. So, yeah, I'm still I ahead. I love Pokemon. There's, there's nothing wrong with the Pokemon song. Okay. No, but I'm just using it as an example. Maybe, like... I'll give Frozen a, a chance again, and then I'll go watch it in the theater. You should watch Paper Towns again. Uh, I wouldn't mind watching it. If it was on cable, I would watch it. I, that's just a movie I would well, watch. See, that's, what, that's what I did. I watched I watched it on Disney+, Plus, Frozen, and then I went to go see the movie after well, the next day. But I feel like if you were to stay home and watch both of them together back-to-back, I feel like that would be a better experience. Watching. I agree. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Yeah. okay yeah, maybe so, there's something I missed that I wasn't paying attention to the next day. To be yeah, just just to be uh, fair, uh, yeah, just a, a takeout because okay. it's not for basically it's not for everyone, which which is what I'm getting from this yeah. review. And so. Josh Gad is extremely annoying in this movie. Uh, I still like him, yeah, um, which I didn't think I would like Olaf, but I actually did like Olaf. All right, so that would do it for us. Thank you so much, uh, Rigo, for hosting. Thank you so much, Z, for hosting. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Dan the Man, for hosting. <laughs> <laughs> Mike. <laughs> thank me for thank you for hosting. having the thank equipment, you. Mike. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for being here, Mike. <laughs> you're very welcome. Thank you for your house, Mike, and the water <laughs> and the water. You're, you're welcome. We always, not we, for the coffee. That, oh, <laughs> uh, so on that note, we say uh, dine in for a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Yeah. Um, dine in for knives out and take off for frozen two. Wait, did we actually say that? I think it was. I yeah. think no, you no, guys think gave that. Yeah. Oh, take it. Sorry. Take out for a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Yeah. Dine in for. No, no, you got it right. Dine in for. No, 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 you got it wrong. And, <laughs> and take out for Frozen Two. There I'm just go. kidding. <clears throat> so that do it for us here. Uh, let us know what you thought of the films. Um, if you've seen them, let us know. Spoiler free, please. Keep it spoiler free. Yes. Rego. Unlike <laughs> what? When do I ever do that? <laughs> also, Rego. Rego spoils things all the time. On all the time. In our I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, on that note. Uh, uh, thank you so much I'm Dan the Man make sure to f- uh, visit our website at moviemenupodcast.com also uh, subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts Stitcher SoundCloud Google Play wherever you listen to your podcasts uh, please subscribe to us comment like share and uh, follow us on social media on Facebook uh, Instagram Twitter YouTube channel we are everywhere and you can find this all at our website moviemenupodcast.com until next time guys thank you so much and We'll say goodbye. Two minutes. A two, a three, a four. Two, a three, a